Don't worry, I'm not going to make any more unbearable puns. Only shooting stars break the This video and my channel are sponsored by untapped.gg. Are you looking to improve your skills in Magic the Gathering, get a look into the metagame, or maybe just get suggestions for draft picks while you're in the limited queue? Be sure to check out untapped.gg. It's a little add-on that helps you out when you're playing Arena, and you can get the download for it in the description of this video. Untapped also helps me track my decks uh, so other people can read them because it's really fun to be able to share my decks with friends. Thank you so much to untapped.gg. Hello everybody and welcome to Brawl Stars! I'm Amy the Amazonian and today I'm going to be playing Gorklaw, Terror of Calcisma. I've actually played this deck before and it's always really fun. Uh, this is all about big, stompy, green creatures, which are in abundance in recent sets. In fact, I have two cards that just got released that are in this deck. I'm talking about Silverback Elder, where whenever I cast a creature spell, I can destroy artifacts or enchantments, gain life, or ramp, which is great for casting even more big, chunky green spells. And even more important, the Defiler of Vigor that lets me start using Phyrexian mana to pay part of my permanence costs while buffing up my board. And because my commander, Gorklaw, discounts big green creatures and gives trample to big creatures, this is a recipe for winning. I really love Gorklaw. This is one of my favorite just go-to decks to sit down with and play a bunch of games. And it's really fun in 1v1 if you prefer a kind of aggro, face-hitting strategies. We also got a nice new addition to Arena, Elvish Mystic. Getting as many Land War Elf type cards into this deck as possible is great because you want your Goreclaw down as fast as you can before your opponent can really interrupt your game plan. Ramp is big, Creatures is big, and we're gonna play some games. Angrath the Flame Chained. He makes you discard, he steals your creature, and he sacrifices them too if they're small enough. I'm going to keep this hand because it does have good ramp in it. And I'm going to hope that Angrith doesn't try to take my big old bear, Goreclaw. He is uh, mine to do beating with. I'm going to play the Incubation Druid. It might die. They are in Rakdos colors, which means single target removal is abundant. Ah, or even multi-target removal that just happens to have that. It was a good move, though. A uh, good idea to take that out. I'm going to play Topiary Stomper. I could wait until I have Goreclaw down since it reduces the cost on the Stomper, but I like having another creature out, and I like it being this 4-4. It's not going to be able to attack or block until I have seven or more lands, but it does hang out. It's it's my buddy. It also adds to Galta, who checks to see how much total power of creatures you have. Get out the Arcane Signet. And actually, Owlback Piper. Another smaller creature in body with some really strong abilities. Alpac Piper, it, it enables me to cheat creatures out from my hand so I don't have to cast them. Being of cheating out creatures. Fires of Invention! Nice way to do that. That's going to limit them to two spells per turn and only on their turn. But they're not going to have to pay mana for them. Um, that's a little scary for me. So let's go for our commander, Goreclaw. And I could go for Galta, but instead I'm going to go for Cavalier of Thorns. I should have been more careful there. Uh, I could have avoided tapping with the Hashep Oasis. And now we have seven lands, because we hit one off the Cavalier of Thorns Enter the Battlefield ability. Topiary Stomper able to swing in. We know they are running Blood on the Snow, and probably some other board wipes too in their deck, because of Snow-Covered Mountain and Snow-Covered Swamp. But with five lands, there's a lot of things they could hit me with. Ooh, okay, Fenlarker. I'm going to discard my Menagerie Curator. It gets exiled. And now Davriel's going to make me discard again. Bye, Galta! Now all they can do is activate abilities. So they use the Mind Stone there to draw a card. And since I'm empty-handed, nothing happens. And since we know they're able to make me discard, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, get some Smash on here. I'm going to use Hashup Oasis on Goreclaw, sacrificing the only desert I have. I'll have to play this other forest to bring me back up to seven. 
and we're swinging in with everybody. Gorklaw says, my dear beloved big chunky green boys, would you care for plus one plus one and trample? They're not interested. All they have out is a one one that can get a teeny tiny bit of power and toughness. One entire power and toughness, which means that we are the victor. Bringing back lands from the graveyard, Soul of Wind Grace. One of my favorite kitty cats, back in avatar form. We keep this. Soul of Wind Grace is a pretty sweet new commander. Um, really, really good value. This is one of the most like jund good stuff commanders they've printed. And I love that, I respect that. I also respect that you've played a turn one land or elf, so I'm gonna play a turn one arboreal grazer and get in the second land tapped. I'm ramping. They're exploring even more ramp. Ahoy! Ooh, but they didn't get a land off that, so they're gonna use Abundant Harvest to get one. Rootbound Crag. Ooh. Okay. Uh, I'm actually going to be playing the Menagerie Curator here. I can only use this to cast creatures, but there's something kind of fun about my interaction between Goreclaw and the Menagerie Curator. There are no bears in my deck. So, Menagerie Curator, when it sees me cast, Goreclaw says, Hey, you don't have any other bears. You can draw a card. So this is ramp that I can only use for some cards, but I do get the added bonus of it drawing me a card for Goreclaw. Most other things in my deck, though, druids, lots of druids in the deck, beasts, elephants, there's a couple of those. Uh, they won't draw me cards, but it's nice that it helps me with my commander. Matching success. Oh, they're going for land destruction. That's awful rude. That's very, very rude. That also limits uh, what I'm able to do here, since I can use this to cast creatures. I don't believe there's any creatures I can cast. Shaper Sanctuary will protect me from future land destruction, so I'm going to play that and just swing in with the Menagerie Curator. Getting hit with some Ponza. The reason that they're definitely incentivized to uh, destroy my lands is because it means they can take them from my graveyard. This is also land destruction, the uh, Memorial to War. Druid of the Emerald Grove would get me more lands, but I'm going to go for Goreclaw. Draw card two. Who knows? Maybe it will be a land! That's what I like to see. And I will sit here looking frustrated at Soul of Windgrace. Soul of Soul of Windgrace also has these other abilities of discard a land, gain three life, discard a land, draw a card, or discard a land, become indestructible. All great abilities when you can get the lands back from the graveyard. Bring Bloom Dryad. They're going to destroy one of their own lands, sacrificing it to get a bit more mana here. And the Provisioner is seeing that landfall and giving them some extra treasures. Uh, with three mana up, they do have the potential to make this indestructible, so I'm not going to block. I'm just going to let five damage go through. Tireless Provisioner swim swimming in mana right here. Mortality Spear on my Gore Claw. At least I do get to draw a card. Ooh, Averbrook Caretaker. That is a nice one. And I'll bring Goreclaw from the graveyard back to the command zone. I think I could go for even more kind of cheaper sanctuary type effects here. So I'm going to just play the Battle Mammoth. I would have preferred to play only a few mana for it with Goreclaw, but I'm fine with casting it. And I will pass the turn since Arboreal Grazer's not going to do very much. Um, Battle Mammoth pretty much the exact same ability, except it's not just creatures, it's permanence. So they're going to destroy my forest. RIP to my forest. Soul of Windgrace can attack, bring that back so they can do it again next turn. But I don't mind it that much. Um, do I think they have a land in hand? No. Do I feel like blocking? Also no, because I really want to get my Great Henge and Galta out. Hmm. And only use that for creature mana. So here comes the Henge. 
They do have ways to destroy artifacts and enchantments in your deck. Almost definitely. Um... Here's a wolf. And then I have this down. Uh, I'm okay with blocking with the battle mammoth. Ah, they did have a land in hand. They had a forest. So yes, if I had blocked, they would have just made this indestructible. Thorn mammoth, though, is just big enough to try to munch up the soul of Windgrace. It's all about how much mana we got. Do they want to do it again? More memorials to war? Gonna turn my snow-covered forest. Yes, I would like to draw a card. Hmm, into a soul of the harvest. And they're doing that again. Battle mammoth operational. We trade. They will have enough mana to replay this next turn. Or possibly this turn. Yep, they do, because of all those treasures and a tireless provisioner. How about this land that we totally didn't just draw? Hmm, do I want to get my Goreclaw out? I mean, yes, obviously I want to get my Goreclaw out. Here comes Goreclaw! I have to discard a card because we have too many sweet, sweet cards here. Um, I'm going to drop the Piper. Don't really feel that it's necessary right now. You having fun with your Ponza over there? I will no longer be drawing a card, by the way, so I did leave my elephant to death. Pirate's Preventer says, more mana? Why, of course, sir. Arcane Signet coming out, more ramp. Cemetery Tampering. Oh my. This gets you your card if you have 20 or more cards in your graveyard. It also just adds more lands to the graveyard. Hey, I think that it's time to get slamming with the Mammon. Maybe just a Galta, something big, something chunky. I'm gonna go for Galta. Nice, thank you. How about a human werewolf? A oh, woo. We get some extra counters on Goreclaw and swing in with her. You know what? You can come too, Wolfie. Hello? Big a woo. I like their land destruction loop. I think it's cool. I also think that my Galt is really cool. And my extra large Aberbrook caretaker. There are 11 cards in their graveyard. But I have yet to reveal what they get off hideaway. Faithless looting, get some more things in graveyard. Do you want to keep destroying my lands? I won't stop you. I'll just stomp you. Ooh, what are you using all that mana for? Immortal fun! That's gonna make their creatures bigger and cost less. Ha! Huh. Yeah, I'll draw a card. Uh, they're gonna blast Goreclaw. I will move her back to the command zone. And they are empty-handed. I think. Gotta start causing some damage, though. Menagerie Curator says, You have no more elephants left in the deck. They're all dead. Um, and I could fight uh, Soul of Windgrace. I feel like it doesn't really matter, because they can bring it back. I'm gonna fight the Tireless Provisioner. Bonk. Good bonkins. Get to put some extra plus one, plus one counters on a buddy. How about this wolf? And swing in with Galta. Good chunk. We have to discard two cards, because we are, let's say, burdened by greatness, by mana. Currently 17 cards in a graveyard. They draw an extra card from the Immortal Sun, too. And a Tireless Tracker, which gets them a clue, a clue! And another clue. 
They can crack those open to draw more cards. Make this bigger. But we still have a ton of trample and damage here. Thank you, Galta, for that. Oh, they're saying nice. I don't like that they're saying nice. It makes me think that they have... <gasps> I was about to say Star of Extinction. Guess what it was? It was Star of Extinction! Do I have anything with haste here? Darn. I don't. That would be so beautiful if I just had, like, one big hasty creature. I think we're just gonna uh, lock and load here, though. Urx Harbinger. Which, I think this is ready to trigger? Yes, they have 21, so they're gonna get whatever that card is for free. Uh, Lanor Elf. I need more. How about Legion Carry Teed? I'm wide. And they're drawing a card. Nice. Let's see what they have under their cemetery tampering. Whatever it is, they don't want it. Whatever the card is, it must not be worth it. Uh-oh. That's gonna be Meat Hook Massacre, Blood on the Snow. I, it's gonna be a board wipe. I fear it. Oh, they're digging. They're digging, but they know exactly what they want. They just have to find it. Yeah, it's possible that they want to destroy the board, and whatever's under here would be a creature also destroyed. Maybe Casualties of War? No, Casualties wouldn't quite be enough on its own. Ulamog! Hi, Ulamog! Would I like to draw a card? Uh, yes. But you know, I don't think Ulamog's enough on its own. You're gonna need something else. You have two mana. What do you have? Bones? Oof. Alright, so now I need to get a hasty creature. And I didn't get one off the top. So what I was thinking is heraldic banner swinging. We would have lethal there. Bad news, sad news. Didn't quite get there. And we also don't have our card draw out anymore. Hmm. Thinking about maybe Druid and Leafkin. I'm gonna go Druid and Leafkin. Get a nat 20. Nat 20! That's a 12. That's fine, that just turns this into a smaller bit of ramp there. Leafkin Druids out. And we have to discard a card. I'll discard that land. Oof, they got an Oracle of Moldiah. So that is what they had been uh, hiding under the cemetery tampering. Eldest Reborn. I'll sacrifice Leafkin Druid. Soul of Windgrace is able to bring a land back. And I see that removal on top of their deck. They have a Tear Asunder. What a game. Jukabog, there goes my graveyard. I don't have that much graveyard recursion. I am a, um, I'm a mono green deck. Ooh, and they're attacking me with Ulamog to mill me for another 20. I'll take the 11 damage. Ouch. Big ouch. And remember, we know about the Terra Sunder that's on the top of the deck. We know it's going to cause a problem for us. Right now, if I swing in, I can just get rid of the Oracle of Moldiah, but that's not really going to cut it for me. Um, I think we just got to continue trying to build our board wide. And I'm going to play the Green Widow. And Heraldic Banner, naming green. And do I want a ramp? Or want a slamp? We're gonna swing in here. Force a block.
And they have lethal. The way I saw it, I didn't really have a way to win. I could have played two different creatures, held back, blocked, but... Unless we were lucky and got, like, our questing beasts off the top, felt like it was unlikely that we would get anywhere. And oof! Not Bold Slumber Mound. If you thought that recurring the memorial to war was rude, bringing back the Slumber Mound is way more brutal. I like it. I like this person's strategy. I like the way they built their deck. And uh, I'm happy that I got to play against them. Oh, well, they chose not to go for lethal, though. Um, that's cool, too. You don't have to kill me right away. You can wait just one moment more. While they destroy my lands. I wonder how many lands they destroyed this game. It was a lot. Okay, let's see what's on top of our deck. Oh, the Lovestruck Beast! He's just a little guy! I'll show them what I have. It's a good game! I still enjoyed it. Let's see what you reanimate. They've exiled my graveyard, so things aren't that interesting there. There's gotta be something good in here. Tireless Provisioner, that's a good one. And there are no cards remaining in my library. No blocks? Let's die! Good game, RCRM. I like what you're doing. Green on green on green on green. It's Tusky, bearer of secrets, the squirrel who draws cards. Hey, wait a minute. I know our opponent. That's Morgancorn. Morgancorn is a uh, regular in my chat. Always nice to run into somebody in the queue. All right, Morgancorn, let me hit you with a high there. And a forest. I kept this hand because it's got ramp that allows me to play Gorklaw on turn three. Oh, they're emoting. Okay, wait. Let me hit them right back with another emote too. Oh no, ramp! How about this and that? Boom! Okay, Mind Stone. Time for Goreclaw. There's a couple fight spells that definitely could take Goreclaw off this battlefield. I'm just going to hope they don't have one right now. Ooh, Ronus gonna double up the power of their 3 and their 3-2. Probably gonna swing in since I get that fresh, hot vigilance. Very good. And uh, now that we have our double mega ultra discounts, uh, I want to do stuff too. Hmm... It's all green all the way down. Let's get Elder Gargaroth out and Ronus the Indomitable. Ronus is going to be able to block because I do have another creature of power four or greater. Kind of fits the same theme here. Pretty nice. Which means even if their god were to swing at us, we'd be able to block. Ooh, Titan of Industry. No, my Mind Stone! Gilded Goose, they've got more ramp, and they've undone my ramp. So, like, right now, we've got Spooky Board versus Spooky Board. Hmm, I'm gonna need ramp, though, so I'm gonna go for the Topiary Stomper. Pitch for me a land, thank you. And the Green Widow. Board, sufficiently scary. They're getting value off their Provisioner, and here comes Toski! If any damage makes it through, Toski will draw them a card. Alright, that's good. Uh, I could go for Old Gnawbones. That gives me both a humongous flyer and some potential future, um, future damage, treasure, etc. But I'm actually going to go for Thorn Mammoth instead. I'm going to use the Thorn Mammoth to take out the Tireless Provisioner so their land drops stop giving them as much value. And I will sit here. The goose is loose.
Klaski has to attack. Elder Gargaroth loves this. Because it means I get to draw a card, make a beast, etc. I'm gonna go for drawing a card. Hmm, Ronus for a huge swing. Would it be lethal? I'm gonna say, yeah. I think it'll be lethal. Thorn Mammoth, I'm gonna let you uh, go ahead and munch up this Rhino Warrior to get rid of a bunch of toughness off this battlefield. I have no wolves, so I don't really feel like I need to play the Nightpack Ambusher. <laughs> but here we go, we're gonna swing in with everybody. Gorkla's going to give Trample to the board. And plus one, plus one. Um, draw a card, sure. And that is so much damage. And because this is Death Touch, they can only prevent a single damage per blocker on it. That's gonna be game. GG Morgancorn! Raelius Sky Shroud Partisan is an elf tribal commander. Hey, look at that! An elf! I'm gonna keep this hand. I really like having this turn one Llanowar elf. That's the first game today I think I've had it. That's the fastest, quickest ramp in the West. It was a sentinel, it's also a mana dork, it's a little bigger than mine, and I can't swing through it. I'm gonna use two of my mana to foretell the battle mammoth. It only reduces its overall cost when I'm casting it by one. It actually increases the total cost by one, but still a good way to set up for a Gorklaw turn. Nice, elves, elves, and more elves, which is all I would expect from an elf deck. Here comes Gorklaw. Gorklaw, gonna discount all my big boys. Ah, the Imperius. Perfect. They have their new Elf Lord out that does allow them to draw cards. I might want to prioritize killing that this turn. Um, so I have the choice here between do I want to get the Caretaker out? I'm gonna go for Kogla. Kogla, kill the Visionary, take away some of that card draw, and then we're just going to sit here. I could attack in, but because they have Narnum Ragged Renegade, um, they have Death Touch, and yeah, no, that's not worth it. But now, Monkey Acquired. We have Kogla the Titan Ape on the battlefield. This is a human, in case I need to, I don't know, do Kogla things. First, I want to do Battle Mammoth! And, Everbook Caretaker. And our opponent knows that this turn isn't lethal, but next turn is swinging in for so much damage. There's no way to survive. A good game, elves. Love to be the faster of the two aggro decks. Grease Fang, the Okiba boss. You see her a lot in Pioneer these days because she's real good at cheating out the Parhelion too. Uh, I'm going to keep this hand. You know, it doesn't have a third land. It does have a turn one Llanowar elf, which is a favorite of mine. Hello there, Grease Fang. They're using the alternate art. This little rat uh, returns vehicles from the graveyard. Gives them haste, lets them attack, and then puts them back in hand. Really good way to get extra value out of discarding cards. Thoughtsies! Yep, I got some Thinksies. What Thinksie do you want to remove? Harbinger, since I assume most of your removal is in black. Ranger class, since it gets me the ability to play creatures off the top of my deck. A dog? They're thinking about it. They went for Grix Harbinger. I think for the reason I outlined, which is it's kind of hard for them to, you know, deal with it. Uh, I'm going to play Ranger Class. This is a card that would get discounted by Goreclaw. So I'm going to hold it for now. And do I want to just go for the Claw? No, I'm actually going to go for Druid of the Emerald Grove. Without more mana in hand, I want to make sure I can actually play something after I get the Goreclaw out. I got a nat one, so neither of those go onto the battlefield. I'll just swing in for two. Three mana now. Not much to do. Like they're passing straight up to end step. Okay. 
Uh, I'm just going to try and build up the board a little more. Or do I want to play cautiously? I think I'm going to play cautiously. I'm going to activate the ranger class and attack my opponent. Buffing up Druid of Emerald Grove. Who's being murdered? All right, I did correctly read that they had removal. That's why I didn't want to play Goreclaw, because just getting out the primal adversary, that's not that impressive. If I can build up a pile of these big reduced cost cards in my hand, for Gorkla, then I could have an explosive turn later on. Get to the archive. You can get them anything. And that's what I don't like about it. Also, it gives them a good opportunity to put a vehicle in the graveyard if they happen to have a vehicle in hand. A key to the archive, if you haven't seen the spell before, um, it's a really good mana rock that also gives your opponent a sort of broken card. Uh, Peace Walker Colossus now in the graveyard. Yeah, it's a really good one for a Grease Fang. You can even crew it right away. Nice. Uh, I could go for Soul. I could go for Goreclaw into Primal Adversary. And then give it one fake kick. Or I could just activate Ranger Class. I'm going to hold this value. In we go with everybody. And I'm going to buff up the Wolf Token. Ah, woo. I wonder what they got. That's what I fear. It's like, did they get a board wipe? Did they get extra turns? Did they get counter spells? Tutors? It it really could be too many different game turning cards. Okay, Murderous Rider. They still have four mana out. Is it time for Grease Fang? No, Liliana, Waker of the Dead. They currently have two cards in Graveyard, so they could kill Lanor Elf. Or they could make me discard a card. Nope, they went to kill Lanor Elf. Oh, hello, Crater Hoof Behemoth. That's a card I like. I'm going to play my Goreclaw. And I'm going to use it to play my Elder Gargaroth. And then I'll swing just at their face. This dog gets an extra counter. And I think this is going to be the moment of truth. If there's a board wipe. RIP to my beautiful creatures. If there's not a board wipe, hey, let's party. Let's win. Let's go. A couple just like smaller pieces of removal could also work. Doomblade. All right, so it was just single target removal is what they got off the um, key to the archives. Gravebreak Alamia has lifelink and it's gonna put the Parhelion probably in the graveyard. Um, that is the ultimate card to get with Grease Fang, though it won't immediately win them the game here. But we have a very special card on top of our deck. A little someone named Crater Hoof Behemoth. A little buddy. Oh no, they went for Sky Sovereign, probably because it can kill Goreclaw. I'm gonna discard Soul to Harvest. And here we go. Hoof it up! I could have played the uh, adversary first, but I don't think I needed to. Greater Hoof Behemoth, get our buff, swing on in, and win the game. Four lifelink is not going to be enough against this meaty board. Oh, hanging out with the peeps. Or maybe the peep peeps, because Falco Sparrow is a bird. A bird demon. I'm going to keep this hand. Hello, Falco Spara. This lets them remove counters to play things off the top of their library. And since I've drawn a third land, I'm going to start with just making a human from the heart's desire. And I'm going to play this next turn as a mana dork, as a creature that can tap for additional mana. Hmm, Stone Coil Serpent. Nice. That thing's full of counters. No attacks. Because um, it would die. Bossery Cat. Ooh, you put even more counters on things. Bossery Cat is a great card to get early in a game because it's able to just generate so much good value and has a really strong ult. I'm a little surprised they're actually not protecting it. Um, I guess that they're not that afraid of Goreclaw, which makes sense just based on what our decks are. 
Four claws coming out, and I'm going to swing for one entire damage at Bossry Cat. Yeah, get it, Bossry. Right now, they don't have blue mana, so they can't play their commander yet. That's too bad. But Stonecoil Serpent can be a good defender against Gorkalaw here. But my plan is just to get value, extracting value from my Gorkalaw. Let's get Cavalier of Thorns, Laird of Hydra, or the Forest. Uh, I'm actually going to take the Forest here, because that gives me three mana, which allows me to play Elder Gargaroth. It's a really good card. And that's... Just a lot of damage. Gonna be able to take that out. I'm bigger than their serpent. Game's done. Too fast. Raph Capuchin, the ship's mage, allows them to cast historic spells with flash. Let me tell you my opinion of this card. I don't like it. I see it played with just so much control flash. Let's call it counterspell nonsense. It's an Azorius Flash kind of deck. Not really my taste. But I'm going to do my best to, to uh, weasel my way under them. Catch them by surprise with the bear. All right, Gorkalot, Terror of Calcisma. Hmm, they have mana. I have a Prowling Serpent card. I'm going to actually start Wolf Willow Haven. Into the Serpapard, because I do not trust them to not have counterspells in their deck. Many counterspells in their deck. Not one or two, like 10 or 20. Also gives me another turn of ramp. That's going to give me, uh, I think, six mana next turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, it does. And my creatures are dead. Rude. Well then, uh, I could go Gorklaw, but I wouldn't be getting much value out of it. So I'm going to start with the Defiler of Vigor. And you remove me, a 6-6 six, six with Trample. There's a good chance I can. But I'm going to try to stop them from doing that. Um, let's pay some life. Um, yeah, I will, I will bleed for this deck. Does she resolve? Nope, Gorkalaw has been countered. Move it to the command zone. Here comes the adversary. I'm just going to play regular mana for it. And swing in for eight. Poor Gorkalaw. She deserved better than this. At least the Defiler of Vigor is going to do some work while you're busy. Now remember, they could have a 3-3 by surprise at any time. They're saying good game. Oh, what? You played one board wipe? And now you're done? Get out of here with that. Moldrotha the Gravetide. She who brings things back from beyond. This is an okay hand. I do wish it had more lands in it, but I think it's keepable. Nice. Getting that Evolving Wilds means that they'll be able to keep getting more things from the graveyard. Here we go. Snow-covered forest. We got a turn one pack leader. Playing aggressively. Pack leader will grow when we cast our big expensive spells. It's also just a cool guy. Um, we can go for Druid of the Cowl here. Karyotid is great because it does scale up for more mana once we get our big creatures like Gorklaw out. I've got four mana. And they continue to ramp up into the north. That's probably going to get a snow dual land. Now, I do think that there's a chance that they have counter spells, so I am actually going to lead with Prowling Serpapard. Most build other decks don't run that many counter spells because they're based around um, permanence, but it is better to play it safe. Um, it, it's more likely that their removal is going to be based in recurrable permanence. Think like Binding the Old Gods or Ravidus Chupacabra, Noxious Gearhulk, that sort of thing. Oh, hey, Vorinclex. Uh, that would make my Nyssa 
very bad. So I'm not going to play it. Uh, instead, maybe Goreclaw, maybe the Karyotid, maybe even the God Eternal Ronus. Um, I'm gonna go for the Ronus here. Is it going to get a counter? Except it won't, because of Vorinclex. And I'll swing in with the Prowling Serpapard. Kapow! Eight damage to the face. Time warp, taking an extra turn. Probably not attacking, though, because I don't think they want to trade with Ronas. But maybe they do. Ronas is like, please fight me. Nice, they can get their Evolving Wilds back. Play that every turn. Crack it and thin their deck by getting another basic out. Again, what a shame. Just don't have it. Um, we could attack in with something like Ronus, uh, but as a reminder, they are able to get things back from their graveyard, which makes it a lot less good, especially until, like, I can get the Moltrotha off the board. I'm going to probably try for a lethal swing next turn if the board state doesn't change that much. Rexian Arena is going to deal upkeep damage and draw them a card. And they're going to recycle this Evolving Wilds again. Again. Again? Again. All right. They have one, two, three, four, five mana up here. Let's see if that's enough to stop my monkey. <laughs> pack leader still does not get a counter. This pack leader would be huge. Smack into Muldrotha. R.I.P. Kogla. You were a beautiful monkey. And now it's time to attack with everything. Gorkla's going to buff the biggest ones. This has Death Touch and Trample, so it's not very good for blocking. And this is still... Mmm! An exquisite amount of lethal damage. Good game, Moldrotha! And thank you to everybody who is watching this video, or the people who are hanging out with me live at twitch.tv slash Amazonian. I appreciate you guys so much. Remember, if you ever want to come over to my channel, I'm playing Magic pretty much every single day, so I really look forward to seeing you there. Um, also, thank you to Untapped for again sponsoring this video and so many other ones on my channel. Also, no thank you to the bug who keeps smashing into the light fixture up there and making a weird clicking noise. It's not coming through on the recording. I just want to point out that it's there. I hope you all enjoy this episode of Brawl Stars and get your mono green on.